All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our prospecting and farming class. My name is Robert. Thank you so much for joining us. This is part of your Elite Master Series training. Today, we're going to go over exercises on prospecting. How can we find clients, right? We're looking for sellers. We're even looking for buyers, just any type of customer that we can find using the services that are available to us. Guys, if you have any questions, as always, unmute yourselves, ask questions. This is an interactive class. If you don't want to ask out loud, you can always write in the chat and I will respond. And as you guys notice, we are recording our session and you can always find our sessions inside of our YouTube channel. And here it is. And I'm going to go ahead and share that with you on the chat right now. And I have pretty much every single class that we have um, taught here at Elite Ocean View Realty. We have it inside of the YouTube channel. All right, so we're going to be loading this class as well uh, later on this afternoon, and I'll share it with you guys on our group chats. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Of course, we are going to use the services that are available to us through our MLS membership. All right, so we need our MLS membership in order to use these services. Those of us that are new, we need to sign up with the MLS so we can gain access to these programs. Those of you that have been around for a while, you guys know that you'll log into the Miami Gateway. We are going to use a combination of services. We're going to use the MLS matrix. We're also going to be using IMAP and we're going to be using Remind Pro. So as a reminder, matrix is right here. All right, that's your MLS. And then scroll down a little bit. You'll find a blue icon like this. That's Remind Pro. That's an excellent prospecting service we're going to go over today and then imap imap is a public record system all right so when we find ourselves on, on with a little bit of downtime and we want to plan ahead we want to start prospecting we're going to use a combination of these three programs all right so give me one second so someone's asking me or letting me know in the chat that they cannot see the mls on my screen i have not activated the mls yet you guys can see this screen right the one with all the services yes or no yes robert all right so just give me a sec i will be switching off to the mls that's the mls that's remind so I'll be switching off to those right now. I was just going over where you can find the MLS, which is CoreLogic Matrix right here. And Remind Pro, which is this service right here. And then IMAP, which is this service right here. Okay. All right. So yes, let's go ahead and get started with the MLS. We're going to go ahead and click on Matrix MLS, and that's going to get you inside of CoreLogic Matrix. Guys, if you need to take an MLS class, we have multiple MLS classes. We have a basic class. We also have an advanced class. And we do have an MLS data entry or listing input class. And we do have it scheduled on our calendar on the Monday or Thursday um, classes. And you can always go to our YouTube channel and you can review the past classes that we've had for the MLS classes. All right, so the reason why we're going to use the MLS is pretty much for market research. When you're prospecting, you want to try and find out what the market is doing in that area. You don't just want to say, all right, I want my entire neighborhood without knowing how the market is behaving. How are you going to approach these potential uh, you know, home sellers, right? So... One way is to feel out the market is to see what the inventory is in that particular market and see the the speed of the market. Like, is it a hot market or is it a cold market? Is it a seller's market or is it a buyer's market? OK, for that, we're simply going to go up here to where it says more and we're going to go ahead and click on market reports. OK, we're going to click on market reports and we are always going to run what's called a market conditions 1004 MC report. Guys, this market conditions 1004 MC report, we run it when we're running CMAs. We run it when, uh, you know, we're evaluating properties, but we also run it when we're prospecting. We want to know how the market is behaving in any particular building, subdivision, entire neighborhood, zip code or city. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select market conditions and we're going to remove the coming soon and active with contract. We are going to check active. And then we're going to select closed sales and we're going to go back 365 days. All right. So let's say I am a realtor and I want to prospect my neighborhood where I live. OK, so there are many ways to find it. Of course, you can always open up the map and you can go and draw a shape around your neighborhood. Or if you know the name of the neighborhood, you can go to subdivision and you can put in the subdivision. If you live in a building, then you can come over here to the street address and you can put in the address of the building. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here the name of a subdivision. And it's going to be like this, Lakes on the Green, all right? So we're going to put in the name of a subdivision, and we want to run this market inventory report for Lakes on the Green. I want to see how the market is behaving in this subdivision. So we're going to click on Generate Report at the bottom, and here we have our 1004 MC report, okay? So you guys will notice three columns in your study. The first column is going to go over the first six months, going back to June 21st of last year. And then you have the next three months and then followed by the last three months. So the first line, it's going to tell you how many listings or how many properties sold in the last three months. So we had four sales in the last three months. The second line is your absorption rate. That's telling us how many sales per month. So when you divide four by three months, that's one and a third properties sold per month. We currently have seven active listings. So if you have seven active listings and you're selling one and a third properties per month, that leaves you with 5.25 months of inventory. So if you've ever taken inventory in a store or if you ever taken inventory at your office and you know how this works, basically we have enough inventory to last about five months. Of course, unless next month we sell all five or all seven properties at once. But the numbers pretty much tell us that going back a year, we were selling less than one property per month less than one property per month, and then we did increase to one and a third property per month. Our inventory went from three to five to seven. So the reality is I don't really foresee next month us selling all seven properties. You know, the numbers aren't really telling us that, okay? So when you look at this, you need to decide, is this a market that I want to get involved in? Of course, if you live here, then of course you want to get involved, right? I mean, you want these homeowners to know that you are in real estate and that you are available to help them and that you live there and that you are the market expert uh, expert uh, here, okay? So it's pretty plain and simple. Now, if this shows that you have 10 months of inventory, 12 months of inventory, you know there's too much competition, you may not want to visit this uh, subdivision, right? You may think, all right, well, it's too much competition. What shot do I really have of getting the attention of a homeowner? Now, if this said zero months of inventory or one month of inventory, think about it. No one is selling, right? If no one is selling, then you have an opportunity to connect with the homeowner in that subdivision that may want to give you their listing. Or you may not have any opportunities because no one is selling. So it in reality is, is that you're looking at this and you need to judge for yourself, is it worth it that I visit this subdivision? Now that's your market conditions report. We're going to go ahead and do a, a quick study here on lakes on the green. All right, and I'm going to come here to where it says residential search, and we're going to run an RE1, RE2 search. And I want to do active listings, and I want to do closed sales. And let's go back two years. What's two years, right? 700, 
Um, so we got 360 and 360, so 730 days. All right, that'll be two years. You can always op open the calendar and you can go back. Okay. Now, once again, I'm going to come here to the subdivision name and we're going to put in links on the green. All right. I want to see the activity in the last two years at Lakes on the Green. We're going to go ahead and click on results and we have 29 results. Okay. If you take a look at your um, display, you have all the list prices and you have all the sold prices right next door. Okay. So we have a lot of sales and we only have a few active listings, right? We have one active listing, two, three, and four. You guys can always sort right here where it says status. You can always click on that and you can sort. We have your four active listings and then all of your closed sales. Now, what I want to do is I want to see how many of these sales were sold by the same realtor, the same realtor. All right. So for us, we're just going to come here to where it says SP. And we're going to click. It's like in a spreadsheet, right? Like an Excel sheet. We're going to go ahead and click here and we're going to insert a column and we're going to search for listing agent name, right? Listing agent name. We're going to go ahead and click on apply. All right. So now we have a column that shows us the listing agent. The idea here is that if we see a listing agent who has multiple listings in the last two years, in this neighborhood, then you know that person is one of your primary competition. They must be prospecting this neighborhood. So I'm gonna sort by listing agent right here. And let's see if we have any repeat listers. We have Victor Cruz three times. So Victor must be farming this neighborhood. Okay, Victor must be farming this neighborhood because he has three listings in the last two years. Okay, he sold two of them and he currently has one active. Anybody else here? Everyone here is different. However, as you can see, there's plenty of activity throughout the last two years with different realtors. So Watch out for Victor. Victor is definitely prospecting this neighborhood. If others were also repeated, then we can assume those people were also farming our neighborhood. Okay? All right, so that's another exercise you guys may want to do. Now, we're going to switch off to IMAP because I like to show you guys how to produce what's called a turnover rate. You want to know what percentage of this neighborhood sells every single year. So we're gonna open up IMAP. You're gonna find it right up here and it's, let's go ahead and click on IMAP. All right, so we are now inside of IMAP. We are in Miami-Dade County for tax search, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and see right here where it says subdivision select. We're gonna switch that to subdivision input. And on the right-hand side, we're going to put in lakes on the green. You know, I picked lakes on the green. I, you could have picked anything else. I went with lakes on the green. Okay. And then you see right here where it says uh, start search. We're going to go ahead and find out how many properties are in lakes on the green. Now, of course, it did take me to the new version of IMAP. It's going to do that to you guys. So basically come over here and tax search, Miami-Dade County, Lakes on the Green again. Forgot to do that, that it does take me to the new version of IMAP. So Lakes on the Green, Miami-Dade County, tax search. How many properties are in this community? What's going on here? How come I can't get this? Oh, equal to, let's go contains. All right, let's go contains. All right. We got 586 properties in Lakes on the Green. So out of 586, we're going to go back to Modify Criteria, right? We're going to go back to Modify Criteria. And then you see where it says Sale Date? Let's go back one year. Today is June 21st. So let's go to June 21st of 2023. 
it says greater than or equal to. Okay, let's click on start search. And there were 39 sales, right? In the last year, lakes on the green. So now what is the percentage? What is your turnover? If you've got 39, you're gonna go ahead and put in 39 on your calculator and you're gonna divide it, all right, um, by 586 and you get six point, um, no, sorry, you get 6% or six and a half percent. So my turnover here is six and a half. That's pretty healthy. Right. I mean, if you see a one percent turnover, then, you know, no one is selling in this neighborhood. Why even bother? If you see five, that's excellent. Now you got more than five percent of the neighborhood selling. If you see 10, that that's incredible. That's a lot of people selling. So right now we're looking at a six percent. Now, if I go back once again, modify criteria on the right hand side. OK, and I come here and I switch this to two years. Let's go back to June 21st, 2022. Remember, we had 39. Let's go ahead and click on start search. That brings you up to 71. So the idea is that two years ago, we had a little lower, right, than uh, than 6%. Because when we subtract 39 from 71, we have 32 so the percentage is obviously going to be lower. We still have the 586, right? The 586 homes. But when you divide 32 by 586, you're looking at five, uh, five and a half percent. So within the last year, the turnover rate increased by one percentage point from five and a half to six and a half percent. So we do have turnover here. All right. So now that we figured, all right, I like Lakes on the Green. I want more information on Lakes on the Green. Okay. So let's go back here on IMAP and let's click on Modify Criteria. All right. I got to figure out this uh, location thing on my Google. It keeps on popping up. All right. But that's not a problem right now. We're going to go ahead and erase that uh, sale day. All right. So if you guys want a list of all the owners, on Lakes on the Green, just put in Lakes on the Green here and then just click on Start Search, all right? We get all 586 down here. This is using the new IMAP, guys. Take a look on the right-hand side. You have Download and you have Mailing Labels, all right? So if you're going to do some mailers and you need labels, you're going to click on Mailing Labels, okay? And what do you want? I want the owner address. I want to reach the owner wherever the owner may live. If you go to owner at property address, you are going to reach the property address. So the owner who probably rents out their property will not receive this mail. If you go with owner at property address, right? Maybe the renter who lives there is going to receive the mail. So you always want to go with owner address. Okay. You're going to go ahead and click on next step. You're going to go and create a PDF. You can also do Microsoft Word or a spreadsheet through Excel. Next step. Okay. Choose your label. The default label chosen for us is Avery 5160. So you're going to go to the store. You're going to go to Amazon. You're going to uh, order a box of Avery 5160 labels. So you have them ready to print. Next step is to just go ahead and create the labels. Go ahead and create the labels. And uh, we now have the labels. Let me go ahead and show it to you. All right. We have the owner's name with their addresses. They may live here or they may live in another city, another state, or even another country, but we're going to get their addresses. All right. So this is how you generate labels inside of IMAP. And it's very simple. You're going to get a list of owners, right? And then you're going to look to the right. Once you have your list of owners, right? We have 586. You're going to come over here and you're going to go ahead and click on mailing labels. Now, if you want to download a spreadsheet, just go ahead and click on download. 
figure out what type of spreadsheet you want. I want the phone number spreadsheet. I want all the owners with all the available phone numbers. Not every owner is going to have a phone number. Okay, so we have 586. Let's see. Let's click on phone. Let's click on next step. Once again, you want, um, you just want to download it. So next step, and then it's a CSV file. We're going to go ahead and create a download. And let's show you now the spreadsheet, which is the phone number report. It's opening up inside of my program. So give me one second. I'm going to share this screen with you guys so you can see it. All right, so here's my spreadsheet. Here are the owners. Off to the right-hand side, you will see a column with the phone numbers. So remember, we had 586. Take a look. We have quite a bit of phone numbers. So if you guys are getting ready to do your cold calling and you want to use these phone numbers, you most definitely can. All right. So that's one way to figure out, uh, you know, getting a list of owners and uh, getting their phone numbers. I'm going to go ahead and close this screen out. Anybody have any questions of what we just did? OK, remember, you can always rewatch this video. So even if you don't catch it right now, you'll catch it on the return when you're watching the video. All right. So let me go ahead and close that one out. All right, and let's go back and share the previous screen. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close that out. And let's go back to the homepage by clicking on modify criteria. We're gonna go back to modify criteria and we're gonna stay right here in Lake Center Green. Now guys, if you wanna figure out who lives at the property. You can open one of these fields on the left view you're not using, and we're gonna go ahead and select owner occupied. Then on the right, you're gonna answer yes. Simply answer yes. And you're gonna get now 498. So out of 586, you have 498 owner-occupied properties. These are owners who have homestead exemption, meaning they are living at their property, okay? If I modify this criteria and I go backwards once again, and I say owner-occupied no, and I click on start search, you have a total of 88 absentee owners right? 88 absentee owners. That means they do not live at their property. And guess what these properties are? Are they vacant or are they rented? In most cases, they're rented, right? I mean, if they are absentee owners, chances are these properties are rented and not lived by the owner. Okay. So if you guys want to target renters, then Create your labels, but this time go after owner at property address. Watch me here, guys. Owner at property address. Go to customizations on the right. And what you guys want to do is replace the first line. So we're going to remove the owner's name from the label. And we're going to replace the first line with current resident, right? If you receive, if you're renting out a property and you receive mail and the mail says, and it's addressed to the owner of the property, are you going to open the mail? No, right? So when we are addressing renters, then you guys want to replace the first line. So you go to customizations, replace the first line with current resident. This way, anyone that lives at the property is going to open the, the mail. Okay. All right. So that's current resident. Let's go ahead and create labels and let's take a look at the uh, current resident labels. There it is, guys. So it's all says current resident. 
these are your uh, absentee owners, but we are going to reach the renter, whoever is living at the property. All right. So once again, I am coming through for you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on new search. What's another reason you're going to use IMAP? Trust me, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, you're going to use it for expired listings. So we're going to go here. We're going to click on MLS search, right? We're going to click on MLS search, and we're going to use this to try and gather a list of expired listings. Now, you may ask me, Robert, why aren't you using the MLS for expired listings? You most definitely can, right? I can come here to the MLS and I can do an RE1, RE2 search. And I can say, show me expired listings right here in the last 30 days. The last 30 days in zip code 33141. Let's go with zip code 33141. We have 25 matches, right? And of course we select, uh, let's see, condo. And we have 21 matches. So yeah, you most definitely can do that. But let me show you the magic of IMAP. If I come here to MLS search, listing status, we have something called expired, not relisted. So we're going to filter out those expired listings that were placed on the market again. Very important feature that the MLS does not have. So we're going to go ahead and click here. We have expired, not relisted. And then you can select here a city. Or if you wanted to do a zip code, just like we just did in the MLS, you just open up here and you're going to go ahead and put in zip code. All right. This time we're, we're going to go ahead and put in 33141. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and click on start search. Now, if you hit start search, right? You're going to get the entire list of expired listings, right? We're going to go ahead and click on start search and show you what happens. It's thinking and it's gathering a large list of properties. So what we actually need to do is add a date, a date of expiration. So um, let's let it think a little bit more. If not, I'm going to have to interrupt it because it may take a very long time to gather all the expired listings. I think it's uh, taking way too long. All right, so I'm gonna stop that process. All right, so how do we add expired date? Well, we're gonna open another one of these features we're not using and we're gonna look for expired date, right? Greater than or equal to. So let's go back uh, to May 21st. Let's go back to May 20th. Go back to May 20th. All right. So May 20th, 2024. Now we have here 33141. See here property type. Let's go with condo, right? Condo co-op. Start search. Now we're going to get 13 results. So the difference is that in the MLS, we got, what was it? 20, 21 matches in the MLS. On IMAP, we're getting 13. You know why 13? Because the others were listed back again. So don't bother with the properties that were listed. Another advantage of using IMAP, you can instantly create mailing labels or download the results to your computer so you can start your phone calls. You can't do that from the MLS. All right, so that's why you're going to use the MLS section of IMAP for your expired listings. Guys, when prospecting, right? When prospecting, you want to attack expired listings. When? When? Within that first month, or maybe you want to wait two months. That first week that the listing expires, don't you think homeowners are going to get bombarded with different phone calls from other agents? Possibly yes, right? But after a month, if they have not yet relisted their property, you have a great opportunity of at least presenting yourself and the opportunity to list a property again, okay? Now you take it however you want. I mean, if you wanna contact an owner the day that the listing expires, that's fine. Just know that you won't be the, the only one doing so, right? 
there's going to be other agents doing the same. But if you wait a week, if you wait a couple of weeks, perhaps those phone calls died down and now you can come in and you can present yourself and present the opportunity to list the property again. So you guys work however you want. I just uh, want to let you know that you're not going to be the only one doing expired listings. I mean, that's prospecting 101. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new search. A different way that you might want to prospect is when you target foreclosure homes or people who are facing foreclosures. All right. So you're going to come here to foreclosure search on IMAP, stay in Miami-Dade County or go to any other county in Florida. And let's just go ahead and put in a zip code 331, uh, 33134. All right, 33134. And we're going to go ahead and say uh, property type. So down here, property use. All right, we're going to go ahead and select single family home. Single family home. And we're going to go ahead and click on start search. So in zip code 33134, there are currently 35 homes that are in pre-foreclosure. 35 homes that are in pre-foreclosure. What are we gonna do with these homes? Of course, we're gonna try and approach the owners and offer them our services as a realtor. Guys, these people are facing a foreclosure on their home and you'll see here the filing date, 2022, 2023, right? The case number also tells you uh, the year that it was filed. Here we have a 2024, so someone recently. Now take a look. This foreclosure right here has a green symbol on the left. You know what that means? That means it's currently active, and it's active at 799900 So the same way that this owner is attempting to sell their home, we want to try and get all these other owners who are not selling their homes to list with us. Now, don't approach them initially by saying, hey, we know that you are in foreclosure. That's a little creepy. That's a little intrusive. Present yourself as the area expert that you are a realtor and that the market is behaving very well and that we can capitalize on the market. Let them tell you, you know, I was thinking about selling my home. And if they do volunteer the fact that they are in foreclosure, then let them know that we can get them. Uh, they can we can get them to sell, cash out on their equity, and perhaps even help them purchase another home. All right. So the idea is to not tell them right off the bat, "Hey, we know you're in foreclosure. Let me help you." Just present yourself as the area expert. Maybe tell them that you have a few buyers that are interested in purchasing in this area. Uh, ask them to invite you over to the home so you can preview the home. And if they 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 say yes, then then you, that's great news. I mean, if they say yes, then that means that they're considering selling the home and they haven't yet listed the home. So you're in the door. Okay. Any questions on foreclosures, guys? These are all pre foreclosures. Foreclosure has not occurred yet. Okay. Foreclosure has not occurred yet. They have time now. Back in the day when people fell into foreclosure, most of the time they ended up having to uh, sell their property as a short sale. We really don't see any short sales, many short sales right now because most of these homes have equity. So take advantage of the equity they have. Okay. Another way that we can use IMAP for prospecting is that we're going to go back over here to tax search. And let's go here to zip code 33134 once again. Okay. And we're going to open up here one of these fields that we're not using. And we're going to look for taxes are delinquent. All right. Taxes are delinquent. So we're going to target homeowners who have unpaid property taxes. We're going to click on yes. And we're going to click on start search.
All right, so we have 524 unpaid property taxes in zip code 33134. Let me go back to modify criteria, guys, and uh, let me select a property type, at least single family home. Let me reduce that number. Okay. Start search. We got 267. All right, so it's quite a bit. That's a lot of people who have not paid their property taxes. Let's go ahead and click on one of these homes, right? Let's click on one of these and let's take a look. All right, when you open here, you're gonna see information on this, on this listing or on this property. And we're gonna look for the tax link, which I don't see right now. And I am not sure why I don't see it. Oh boy. All right, let's uh, go back and let's see. Let's try this again. I, I did not expect for that to happen. All right, let me just uh, scroll down and let's take a look at another property. Let's take a look at another property here. And let's view in this tab. You know what we're missing? We are definitely missing the link to the uh, county tax collector. Let me try this from the old version of IMAP because uh, obviously the new version, something's, something's off here. All right, so allow right here. And how do I get to the old version of IMAP? No. Perhaps they need to fix this. Let's try this. It's probably gonna kick me into the new version of IMAP, but I'm gonna try it one more time. Otherwise, I, my apologies, this is supposed to work. All right, taxes are delinquent. Miami-Dade County, zip code 33134. It better not knock me into the new version of IMAP. It did. All right, so apparently the new version of IMAP is missing the information that I am looking for, which is the link to the county tax collector. All right, and I'm going to do this one more time. See if we have any luck. So supposedly all 267 of these homes have issues with their taxes. Okay, we were supposed to see right here a link to the county tax collector. Let's see if this one is it right here. No, that's not it. And uh, we don't see it. So on the new version, apparently they have, they're missing the link. Unfortunately, guys, so I'm not able to show you that right now. They got to get their act together. But on the old version, you would see a, a red symbol here that says unpaid uh, taxes, and you can uh, you know, see how much the balance is. So again, the idea behind this one was that you can target these 267 homes because you know they have tax debt, okay? So before they get foreclosed on, they have tax debt. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show it to you. I tried several times and it's just not happening. All right. Yep. Not happening. All right. So that's your IMAP, guys. Now I'm going to switch over to Remind Pro. Remember, Remind Pro is right here. We're going to go ahead and open it, this up here and we're going to go to search. Okay. We're going to go to search. This is an amazing tool, guys. All right. This is an amazing tool. All right. On the left, we have filters and these filters will help us find the right homeowner, right? Um, let's start like this. First, we wanna come over here to where it says add filter, all right? Add filter and then you see right here where it says status, listing type, price, listing date, status date, off market. On the right-hand side, I placed a blue pin 
on off market. You guys want to do the same. You want to default the off market filter to always be activated. When you're prospecting, you do not need to mess around or bother any owner who is currently working with a realtor. Watch what happens when I remove off market. Look on the right hand side. These are all active listings, right? No, we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and select off market and we no longer have active listings. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, let's go here to a little area like Miami Shores. Right. And I'm going to draw. You can draw a polygon, a rectangular shape or a, a circle. And I'm going to draw a nice little rectangular shape there. There's a thousand homes in there. You see that right there? A thousand, 22 homes. All right. Take a look at all these filters that you see here. We can say, show me absentee. Show me all owner occupied properties. Apply. We cut it now to 799 homes. Okay. Now we can go back to absentee and say, show me the absentee in Florida and outside of Florida. Apply. We got 42. What does that tell you guys? They're absentee and they either live in Florida or outside of Florida. If you want to go for the absentee who live outside of Florida, apply. That's five homeowners. Five homeowners that when you click on one of these homes, you're going to see absentee and they live in Brookline, Massachusetts. What are the chances that this property is rented? Right? There's 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 a huge chance these properties are rented. Give me one second, guys. All right, so we have an absentee owner who lives outside of state. So again, what is this person? Probably an investor, right? Probably owns this property as a second home. Probably even has this home rented or uses it as an Airbnb home, okay? These are all homes that are absentee outside of Florida. Let's go back to the absentee here. What if we want to see corporate owned homes? Corporate owned homes. These are people that purchase these homes using an LLC or a corporation. If you purchase a home with an LLC or a corporation, you either are an investor or you're using your company or your LLC to purchase the home. So once again, if you're after investors, we got 181 homes in this area out of a thousand homes that are corporate owned. Okay. Go back to absentee and click on owner occupied. We have here 799 owner occupied homes. Take a look on the left guys. You see these filters. We have property value, home equity, ownership time. Let's take a look at ownership time. If you want to target owners that have been at their property, let's say for 30 years, you put in here a minimum of 30 years, click on apply. Out of 799, we are now left with 105 results. Owner occupied, owner of the property for a minimum of 30 years. What age group do these owners fall in? I mean, assuming they purchase their property sometimes in their early 30s. They're probably in their 60s, right? Or maybe even in their 70s. Perhaps they're ready to downsize. This is a great opportunity for you guys to focus on potential homeowners who are ready to downsize. Go back to ownership time. 
let's put a minimum here of 40 years. Now, keep in mind, not every subdivision or area in South Florida is 40 years old. This one most definitely is. This area is very old. I'm going to click on apply. We got 91 homes that the owner purchased a minimum at 1984. In 1984, think about that. They are 40 years residents of their home. Once again, these are probably great opportunities for us to prospect and target homeowners who may be ready to downsize. Okay. Now, you see these 91? We're going to go down here on the filters and we're going to select mortgage age. And we're going to select has no mortgage. So we're targeting homeowners that have no mortgage. 44. So we got 44 homeowners who have no mortgage, right? You have 44 homeowners who have no mortgage and have been at their property for a minimum of 40 years. Let me show you another way. We're going to go ahead and clear, all right, some of these filters. We're going to click on this filter right here, no mortgage, and get rid of it. Ownership time. We're going to leave the owner occupied. Go on the left and look for cell score. There are three categories here, low, median, and high. We're going to go with high. And we're going to get a uh, click on apply. All right. So remind in this case, it's giving you eight quality home seller leads. These are people we must pay attention to and we must target because using their algorithm, Remind says that you have a 50-50 chance in getting a listing in one of these properties. All right. How do we figure out their information? You click on the property. You go down all the way down here where it says owner and associated people. And you may have some contact information. All right. So we have here no contact information for Diana and no contact information for Jose Davila. But for Jorge Davila, we have contact info. Click here and you're going to see a phone number and you're going to see an email address. Guys, next to the phone number, if you see the letters DNC, it is a do not call. So do not call any phone number that you catch inside a Remind that has the red letters DNC. All right. There are other ways online using different services that you can figure out people's phone numbers, guys, just with Remind. That's the way you do it. Here we have another owner, and then you're going to come down here, owner and associated people. This person does not have contact information. It's just, you know, Remind is not able to get their contact information. But once again, with their name, their address, and their zip code, you should be able to find out their phone numbers through, um, through different services online. I use a service called truepeoplesearch.com. It's excellent. All right, so sell score high. It's like someone giving you a list of leads. If I'm giving you free leads, call them. They're good leads, all right? Don't hesitate, guys. Don't be hesitant. Well, you know, Robert, this class is great, and you're teaching us all this really cool stuff, and then you never do it. You know, the idea is that if you're not doing much right now, you, you, you need to be prospecting. You need to be building uh, some type of uh, client book for the future. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cancel out sell score high. By the way, I never clicked on median or low. It, there's no use on clicking on median or low. High is what you want. Okay. And, and if I remove owner occupied and I go back to the 1000 homes and I come here and I do sell score high, instead of eight results, we're now looking at 13 results. All right. So the true list of uh, leads here are 13. And that was just in this little area of a thousand homes. Imagine you do this. 
All right, sell score in all of Miami Shores. All right, we're going to come here. We're going to spell Miami Shores, city of Miami Shores. In all of Miami Shores, we have 55 leads, guys, 55 leads. All right, if Miami Shores is not your thing, if you guys do, say, uh, zip code 33131, right? Zip code 33131. We're going to go ahead and cancel out Miami Shores. In zip code 33131, we have 234 possible listing leads. Don't say you struggle to get leads, guys. This is how you get them. Now, how do I get all of these 234 into a spreadsheet? Look on the right-hand side. You see where it says select all? We're going to go ahead and click on select all. And then you're going to come over here to where it says carts. See it on the upper right? Click on that. And then we're going to put here... 33131 cell score high. Okay. And then we're going to click on create. And then we're going to click on add properties to cart. That is how you transfer all 234 properties into a folder. It's just, it's not called folder. It's called what? Carts. On the left, look for carts. And then right here, we have 33131 sell score high with your 234 properties. Now, it's very simple. You just select all, right? We're going to select all. And then you see right here, export. We're going to export this into a CSV file, which is a spreadsheet. And once again, I'm just going to call this 33131 sell score high. And then what columns would you like to export? I am exporting the owner information, property information, mailing address information, estimated value of the property, and the absentee ownership. Click on export. And in about a minute or so, we will have our export ready and I will show it to you. It is going to download people's email addresses and phone numbers when available. Okay. Another thing that you guys can do is send mailers right away from your home computer. Just sit here, click on send mailers. Once again, let's call this, let's call this 33131. Let's click on build mailing campaign and let's take a look. All right. So here, we do have to spend a little bit of money, right? Because we're prospecting and we have 264 leads of possible listing opportunities. And here we have four and a quarter inch by six inch postcard. Well, for 234 pieces, it's going to cost us $189. $189 to generate the postcard and send it through mail. Okay, now you can go with a larger postcard, like six by eight and a half. It's going to cost a little bit more. And you can go even larger, six by 11. Six by 11 is going to cost you uh, probably a dollar a piece, right? I mean, if we have 234 and it's going to cost us 232, it's a dollar a piece. Okay, and then you have other mailers. Once you select the proper mailer, then you're going to go ahead and click on get started and you're going to choose your campaign. What type of campaign are you doing? General farming, right? Are you doing just listed cards, just sold cards? Are you doing open houses? All right. What is it that you're doing? All right. And you're going to come here. You're going to click on general farming. For example, you're going to build your card. You're going to personalize your postcard. You have all these options right here. And once you choose the option, you're going to go ahead and personalize it, adding your photo, your logo, and adding things that you like to add on the postcard. And then you're going to pay for it. The system will generate a postcard and send it through mail. You can include yourself as a recipient, right? You can include your home address as a recipient so you know when uh, this mail was received. So this is just an option, guys. Perhaps you know other options that are le less expensive, but for for sitting, you know, sitting on your home and doing this is not bad. Okay, and that was creating the mailers. You see up here, my download is ready. 
So let's take a look at what we just downloaded prior to the meters. Let me uh, share the screen with you. All right, so here it is, guys. 33131 three, sell score high. All the way to the right, you're going to see the owner's names and you're going to see email addresses and phone numbers. All right, not many, not many at all. Let me show you the difference. Unfortunately, when you're looking at buildings, it's it's a lot more difficult. Let me show you the difference if I choose. Sorry, not that one. A cart that I have here with single family homes. Let's take a look at this. For some reason, when you're looking at condos, many people don't have their phone numbers there. And uh, here we have 881. I'm going to export this. I'm going to call this Royal Oaks. And then I'm going to go ahead and export this one. Uh, we have better chances to get people's phone numbers and email addresses when you're doing single family home neighborhoods. Uh, condos, it's just very difficult. It's just very difficult. All right. But anyways, we did have those 234. You do have their mailing address and you can send them mail. Okay. Remember when you're targeting a building, it's very difficult to prospect in a building by walking into the building and knocking on a door. You can't do that. You can't even walk in the building and place a door hanger on someone's door. You know, the, the, the building security is not going to let you do that. So when you're targeting buildings, it's pretty much going to be mailers. Now, if you're doing a neighborhood like Royal Oaks that I just did, yeah, put on your walking shoes and go door to door and place a door hanger on every single door. I know it's 881 homes, but, you know, it'll take you a week. You know, it's great exercise and you can put in door hangers on everyone's door. All right. Please do not touch people's mailboxes. That is a federal offense. So placing a door hanger on someone's door is perfectly legal. All right, so I'm waiting for this uh, additional spreadsheet to show you that in a single family home neighborhood, you do get more opportunities. So I'm just going to switch off over here to search real quick. Guys, that was your sell score high. There are very interesting filters on the left that you guys can utilize. All right, we showed you ownership time. We haven't shown you home equity, but if you're targeting people with very little equity, you know, very little equity, less than say less than $100,000, right? People that have less than $100,000 in equity in zip code 33131, we have 144. Why would I target these people? Well, I mean, they have very little equity, all right? Perhaps they need to sell their home, right? Here's a, a condo worth $288,000 and they have only $66,000 in equity. Here's a condo, 276, and they have $98,000 in equity. Here's someone with negative one in equity. All right, so you may want to visit these condos and talk to the owners and see how we can help. Here's one at 580,000 value with 33,000 in equity. Let me show you what that looks like, guys. We're, we're nearing the end of our program, but let me show you how that what that looks like. So here's an absentee owner, right? We're going to open up here the tax record and we're going to see that they. All right. How long have they uh, been the owner? They've been the owner now for 3.9 years and it's a family trust. It's a family trust account. Um, I'm not going to go after a family trust. Let's go after a regular owner. 3.2 years. All right. We got a regular owner here. Open up here, owner associated people, and there's Jeffrey Garner, the owner, and there's his contact information. So just click on that and target that, okay? It's really hard to, on a family trust or an OC, um, you're gonna have to go to sunbiz.org to get the information of corporations, all right? So on the left-hand side where it says alert, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Royal Oaks. We're gonna download it. 
and let's see if we are more successful in getting phone numbers and email addresses for Royal Oaks. All right, let's take a look. Go to the right, and you see here the column of phone numbers and email addresses. All right, so we do have more email addresses and more phone numbers. If you live or if you want to prospect Royal Oaks, guys, I recommend that you grab this entire spreadsheet and import it into your CRM, all right? If you guys are using the Agent 3000 CRM, uh, you go ahead and import this into your CRM and start an, an email campaign to the homeowners who we do have email addresses for, all right? You never know when someone's going to call you, you're gonna grab someone's attention by sending them email, okay? You, you also have phone numbers, so there's no excuse, guys. You have the tools in the palm of your hands to get your business going, whether it's expired listings, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, we didn't talk about for sale by owners because for sale by owners is a different story altogether. But please, if you drive by a property and it says for sale by owner, stop, take a picture, make a phone call. Say that you have buyers that you're interested in uh, showing the property to. All right. See if they allow you in the door. And once you're there, then it's your time to shine. All right. But using the combination of IMAP and Remind Pro, you now have the tools available to begin building your client book. Okay. All right, guys. Do you guys have any questions before we wrap up? All right. We're all good. All right, perfect, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for today's prospecting and farming class. I truly hope that you enjoyed it as much as I, I enjoyed teaching it. And I will share this recording with you later on this afternoon. Uh, guys, so thank you so much once again. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Robert. You're welcome.